Ladies and gentlemen, I think it is time that we talk about why I am bullish, and rather I should say so bullish on AMC currently. This comes down to the forced share recalls that I think is going to be happening very soon based off of poor economic conditions and the bond market fully pricing in a recession over the next couple of months this comes down to margin calls this comes down to the win-win situation that i see coming with this reverse stock split we'll elaborate on that more here throughout this video this comes down to cost to borrow rates this comes down to improving fundamentals and much more we'll elaborate on all of those topics here in this video but this 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 video mainly is not supposed to be something that you should copy my mindset right everyone's going to think differently about this trade and this could really help you guys see some details and some different perspective and build it on your own perspectives and the reasons why you are bullish on amc hopefully that makes some sense we're going to get into it here in just one second hit the like button subscribe to the channel source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section so first things first guys and this is not really going to be in like chronological order of what i'm most bullish on or not this is just going to kind of list it all out for you guys so and, and, and we'll also talk a little bit about what is currently going on in the markets and what we can expect for next week as well. I, I should say that too. So first things first, number one, why I'm so bullish on AMC right now comes down to a big thing is this win-win situation that I think is coming. Now, historically, when AMC has raised capital and diluted shareholders, sounds bad, AMC stock is actually rallied. And that comes down to the fundamental case for shorting AMC, or the short thesis, maybe is a better way to put it, is dissolving at that point. If AMC tomorrow had no debt, and they were profitable, or at least it, you know free cash flow positive and was able to support themselves without raising additional capital well i th think it's pretty clear to say there would be no short thesis there would be no reason to be short on amc and shorts would get out of their short positions as fast as they could there wouldn't be this dash to short amc every time um negative news comes out in the same way that it currently is now if the court system for whatever reason on april 27th says that amc has to redo this vote or that amc cannot let ape shares vote and maybe this vote does not pass maybe there is never a one for ten reverse stock split amc is never authorized to sell additional stock into the markets well at that point i think there's a lot of shorts and the numbers are, are here to support this that are short on amc that would otherwise not be short on amc that are short on amc for this arbitrage trade alone that don't necessarily think amc is all doomy and gloomy and i think at that point those shorts would instantly cover on those short positions and you would see additional shorts start to cover on those short positions after all since the start of 2023 short sellers have lost 180 million dollars and that was a lot more just a couple of weeks ago when amc stock was you know six seven eight dollars so i think for those reasons i'm very bullish on the near term with amc and i think that is something that's going to happen sooner rather than later on the note of sooner rather than later i do think relatively shortly here you're going to start seeing forced share recalls now really what this comes down to if you think about archegos and you think about melvin capital and other hedge funds that got blown up that is still fresh in people's minds jp morgan took billions of dollars in losses based off of those two hedge funds alone and they were investing in quote unquote meme stocks so number one since that has happened you have had to see high value collateral pledged against meme stock short positions right your apple stocks your treasury bonds things like that really high quality collateral placed against these companies well if you are a hedge fund 
you are a bank if you're going into economic instability in which the bond market is fully pricing in a recession by the end of 2023 not too often the bond market is actually wrong by the way then there's going to be this rush to get capital and based off of even the hedge funds capital requirements they have to short amc i think uh that can really open an opportunity for amc uh to go higher based off of some forced share recalls because after all nobody wants to have exposure to something that could blow you up in just a moment's notice and that's exactly what amc is so i think those two things more so on a fundamental kind of technical market level those things make me bullish or, or should i say like catalyst to uh the april 27th litigation and, and what happens with the courts i would probably call that just a catalyst at this point so that those are two reasons why i am bullish on this situation right now on top of that short interest at levels that you have not seen in a very long time still even after march 14th same thing with the cost of borrow rates they've not really been this high um for for a while right and you should have seen the cost of borrow rates actually fall after march 14th the live short interest of free float is sitting at 24.44 percent the live short interest meaning the amount of shares currently sold short sits at 126.2 million cost of our average 357.36 percent cost of our max at about 400 percent and cost of our minimum at about 85.22 percent interactive brokers has a cost of our rate of about 214 percent currently with about a hundred thousand shares that are currently available to be lent out so the fact that you're seeing cost of borrow rates actually rising when they should not be after the march 14th vote happened they should have fallen i think that begs the question of why is this happening and i think there's just a lot of uncertainty under the table about this litigation coming april 27th and i think people will shortly realize that history shows when amc does dilute shareholders it sounds really bad but amc actually rallies and and that is like i said because the fundamental case for shorting amc is essentially gone at that point so i do think that is a uh, pretty important to pay attention to now on top of that you have smaller factors like the ftds and people keep asking like when are they going to cover on their ftds hard to say they can get extensions they could just flat out uh, use options or other trading strategies to make it look like they have covered on some of these ftds point being you have never seen this many ftds with amc stock and on a con system basis this is really an indication of naked short selling and it's going to be very interesting to see if we ever get an update from the new york stock exchange as well as um the sec like adam aaron asking them to look into the trading of amc it'll be interesting to see if we get an update from them i doubt we do but if we do that is going to be something that is bullish still for amc and I, I do think there's going to be some upward uh, buying pressure on AMC over the next couple of weeks and months based off of these FTD numbers alone. And it, it'll be interesting to see if we go back on the threshold securities list. Now, besides the things that I just mentioned, I do think there is a tailwind that is going to help push AMC forward and to crush the short thesis simply by seeing better movies going to theaters by seeing more people going to theaters and the overall business fundamentally improving that should be over the next couple of quarters um where where you see that where you see uh a amc kind of doing better and once you see the first quarter of profits just like you've seen with gamestop there is going to be a colossal rally with amc and and gamestop just had their their moment to shine their first profitable quarter in two years the stock was up 45 percent following day down a little bit the next day up about six and a half percent so a pretty decent rally overall but even gme had cost bar rates that were like 20 or 30 percent not two to four hundred percent like you're currently seeing with amc Although these short interest numbers with AMC and GME are very, very similar, almost identical, which is pretty suspect to say the least. Now, 
those are some of the reasons why i'm bullish obviously there's smaller reasons as well but those are some of the biggest reasons now with with amc we know it's highly affected by what the markets do if if the markets are in a very risk off kind of environment then when you get bad news when you get a risk off kind of day it can affect amc very negatively now a couple things i want to talk about in relation to next week and what you need to really watch out for is number one this the markets are pricing in at the may 3rd meeting the fed is going to pause interest rates and the probability on that is about 83.2 percent now why this is a problem is this is telling you that something else is going to break before may 3rd because the fed's not going to pause raising rates if inflation does not come down big time by may 3rd so any data suggesting that inflation is, is going to come down it's going to be very good for the markets any data that suggests inflation is is going higher right is not going to be good at all because the fed cannot pause when inflation is six percent until they know either a recession is is for sure coming if a recession is for sure coming then they could pause because a recession is going to bring disinflation it's going to potentially bring deflation and that's what they need to get back to that two percent inflation target so the market's pricing in a pause actually means the markets are expecting an imminent recession or like i said inflation to come down but that's probably not going to happen at least until the recession actually does come oh my gosh and then i guess more importantly than that it's going to be the economic data and if we take a look at what we have for economic data this week in regards to inflation friday are going to get a very important data point and that is going to be 8 30 in the morning personal spending month over month this is num these are numbers for february guys and you are expecting 0.5 percent so to show positive spending for january's number was a positive 1.8 eight percent rating this is going to really uh, play a role on how the markets expect gdp to be how the markets expect that recession to go so if you get a big positive number here that's going to be positive on the front of economic activity it's going to be very negative on the front of a recession now 8 30 in the morning this is the real data points here that i want you guys to pay attention to it's the core pce price index month over month and this is the fed's preferred measure measure of inflation last month's reading for january you've seen a positive reading of 0.6 percent you're expecting another 0.6 percent increase so you're not expecting inflation to go down really at all personal income month over month last month's reading in january was 0.6 percent you are expecting a 0.4 percent reading so still strong numbers across the board and strong inflation numbers are expected but that is on friday Friday. now on thursday you're going to get continuing jobless claims initial jobless claims uh, and, and these can move in the markets but not as much recently gdp price index these are the final numbers for q4 of 2022 so you're going to get some revisions as well as pce prices again final numbers for q4 some revisions that are going to be happening and those can be a pretty big if those revisions uh, do move up or down by a decent amount, decent amount. Now, Wednesday, you're going to get pending home sales month over month and year over year. Pending home sales year over year, you're expecting a negative 19% number. January's number was negative 24.1%. Pending home sales month over month, you are expecting a positive 2.5 percent rating january's number was a positive 8.1 percent rating so um you know some some give or take there with the um uh house housing data now on tuesday you're going to get fed bars testimony and I believe this is about the, the the banking situation that we are having right now richmond fed manufacturing index this will be important as far as how the economy is doing how gdp is likely to come in richmond fed services dallas dallas fed services revenues and dallas fed services 
index these are actually giving the markets a, a pretty decent you know pop or drop depending on how that information does come out as well as that on tuesday s p k shiller home price uh year over year and month over month coming out at nine o'clock in the morning wholesale inventories month over month advanced data for february expecting a negative 0.2 percent decline goods trade balance you're expecting you know negative 88 billion number that's not really big i mean you've been negative for a, a very long time uh retail inventories excluding autos month over month for february this is going to be key because if if inventories go up that typically means discounts are coming that means usually good inflation data is to come now if inventories are falling that doesn't usually signal good things on the inflation inflation front right you're expecting a negative 0.1 percent decline january's reading was a positive 0.1 percent increase so any big movements in those numbers will be important and really any of these numbers uh big movements will give you a big reaction now you're going to get fed jefferson that speaks monday at 4 p.m and then uh in between about 11 30 and one o'clock you're going to get a six month bill auction a six a three month bill auction and a two-year bond auction and depending how these come in will be important now for reference here guys the two-year bond currently trades at about 3.77 percent the last two-year bond auction that we got was 4.67 percent this is down one percentage point a hundred basis points since the last bond auction that we have gotten that's where the markets are pricing in the recession is you can see it in the two-year bond so if demand comes in really high for this two-year bond yields are going to fall right because higher bond prices go yields go down it's like a dividend stock or if there's not a lot of demand the yields will go higher now i think it's pretty clear bond yields probably going to go lower there's probably going to be a lot of demand for these two-year bonds so uh, that is really what we have in store for this week. Those are the big reasons why I am bullish on AMC. As far as when the short squeeze actually happens, when I'm personally expecting this, some point between the next two months, right? Maybe even around April 27th until about six months from now when the reverse stock split does go into effect. I think whether you get the courts that that say you know this cannot go through i think that gives you a short squeeze right off the bat i think if the reverse stock split does happen that gives you a short squeeze as well so that is it for this video hit that like button subscribe to the channel source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section thank you guys for watching and enjoy the rest of your weekends and i will see you in the next one